Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart Breathings. My name is Sarah Cannon. I am the indie author of more than 25 novels and I'm so excited that you're here. I just got back from the Novelist Inc. conference. So if you are a new subscriber from Nink, welcome. It was such an amazing conference. So thank you to everybody who came out to hear me speak and who talked to me afterwards and it was just really great. So I'm glad that so many of you have joined us here. For everybody else, if you have been around for a while, you guys know that I just had a baby. She is one month old as of yesterday and I just cannot believe how fast time is flying. That's why there have been a little bit less videos than normal, but I'm excited to be back kind of on schedule. I'm gonna to try to have a video out every Thursday and sometimes on Sunday. So I hope that you'll subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll get notified when new videos come up from me because we've got Preptober and NaNoWriMo and then end of the year planning sessions and stuff for writing coming up. But today what we're gonna talk about is one of my most requested videos and something that I think a lot of us struggle with, which is how to know which series or which story to write next. It's how to decide, and I figured this is a perfect time to talk about it because we do have NaNoWriMo coming up and it can just be really tough which story to write. You know you wanna get it done, you know you wanna write those 50,000 words, but there's so many ideas in your head, it's hard to choose. So let's get into it. So this is something that I struggle with as well because I have so many different ideas and I feel like even when I'm writing a series and I'm loving what's happening with these characters, more ideas keep coming and they come from everywhere. They come from real life, they come from the news, they come from other movies that I watch or other books that I read. I think, oh, that would be cool if I combined this and this or you know, just ideas come when you're in the shower or taking a walk, they come all the time. So how do you choose which idea is really the best idea? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna give you six tips for ways that will help you make the best choice. But just know this, unless you have a crystal ball or a time machine and you can go forward in the future and try all these different stories out, there's really no way to know which idea is the best idea. You can do all of these types of things that I'm gonna give you some tips on and still not know which one's gonna be the best seller, which one's gonna be the most fun to write, which one's gonna be the easiest to write until you actually get in and you get it done. My one warning about it though is that you need to make a decision and that's one of the most important things. Decide which story, which series you're gonna write and don't waste any more time on it. Follow the tips that I'm gonna give you, give yourself a deadline and say, okay, like especially if you're trying NaNoWriMo and it starts November 1st and you wanna do some plotting and stuff before that or some story notes, then give yourself until October 10th and say, okay, I'm gonna give myself one week and I'm gonna make a decision at that point. And you can follow these tips that I'm gonna give you, but give yourself a deadline where you say, this is it, this is when the decision is gonna be made. Because otherwise you could literally spend three to six months to a year trying to decide between story ideas. And the other danger, of course, is that if you're not sure about which story you're choosing, you could get into a story and go about halfway through. And then of course, in the middle, things always get tough. And so you start to doubt yourself and you say, this is too hard. I'm gonna try this other story idea that I had. Does this sound familiar to any of you? Hit a like and go in the comments and let me know because I've done this a million times myself. When the story gets hard, I switch and say, well, I'm gonna try this other thing. And that one gets you know, going for a little bit. And when that story gets hard and you could spend your whole life doing this. So the key is to just make a decision, set a deadline, and then commit to finishing it no matter what. When it gets hard, it doesn't matter. Commit to finishing it, especially if you've been someone who hasn't been finishing, this is your chance. Okay, so here's my six tips for how to help you choose the next story or the next series that you're going to write. Number one is to write out a synopsis of your idea. So this doesn't mean you have to write 20 pages or anything like that, but even just one page of this is really the idea. So maybe this is gonna look like a handwritten page that says, it's set in a dystopian world where there's a virtual reality and there's a girl who has been banned from logging into this virtual reality game world. And instead she works in the dystopian world and she has this really tough life, but she's a hacker and she puts this, she's put together this black market gear and she hacks in and she becomes Robin Hood when she's online. She steals from the rich and gives to the poor and everyone in control is chasing her. So this is one of the ideas that I have for a book of mine um, that I just lovingly call hacked. But the short story that begins this is actually in a 
um, short story anthology called Once Upon a Star. But let's say that's the basic idea. You write all that down. Maybe you write some things down about this character, what's her name, and then tell yourself what's the conflict of this story. Obviously in the story that I was just talking about, the conflict is that she's banned from going in and she's illegally going in and now the guys that run the server are looking for her. So her life's in danger. There's also gonna be more conflict in that story. So I would go on and I would write the other ideas that I have. So she gets recruited by another underground kind of black market crew, similar to The Matrix. So this is something I, I also call The Matrix meets Robin Hood. So let's say that's an idea that you have. So you would write down that conflict. You would write down the group that is going to be kind of the inciting incident is her getting recruited to this group. So how does the story get started? Who are your main characters? What's the conflict? So what I recommend is writing out that synopsis with the characters, the conflict, all of that for every single story idea that you're really seriously consider considering writing. Then you want to ask yourself, do I want to write a standalone book or do I want to write a series? So let's say NaNoWriMo is coming up and you know you want to write 50,000 words, but maybe you're planning to indie publish this and you want it to be a series, so it's going to be five or six books. So this synopsis is going to give you an idea of kind of how much teeth this story has, how much longevity it has. If you can't really come up with enough ideas to fill one piece of paper, then maybe this idea was kind of a cool concept, but it's not going to have enough depth and idea for you to really branch it into multiple books. Or maybe you know you just want it to be a standalone, you're gonna write these 50,000 words for NaNoWriMo and then you're done. Or you want it to be a standalone because you want to see if you can query and get an agent with it or whatever it is that you know you wanna do. Think about what your end game is. It is standalone or it's something you wanna write for years to come and then use that synopsis to see how much idea you really have. So that's the first step. If you can't come up with any conflict, the ideas don't start to flow, it just is like, I don't know, what is this? What is the best character? And you've just got all these decisions and you can't really make it, but you've got this one story out of the, say, five synopsis that you did that just started flowing, then maybe that's a good indication that that's the story you need to write because you've got so many ideas that are starting to flow. So that would give you an idea of it. Because a lot of times I think we have these nebulous, like, ooh, there's all these ideas flowing in our head, but we haven't really thought them through. So when you sit down and you force yourself to put pen to paper and really write out the idea, the conflict, the characters, the setting, you're gonna start to see which ideas have more substance to it than some of the others. Okay, number two, once you've done this, and I would recommend doing these in order, but you could just pick any one random one and do that. So tip number two is to check your excitement level. So let's say you've taken the time to say five different stories, write out the synopsis of five different stories. And while you were writing it, I want you to think back on that synopsis and think, which one am I most excited to write? So see how you feel. Do you get that sort of butterflies and your heart starts pumping and you've got all these ideas and when you go to talk about it, you start to get excited. When you think about it, you get excited. What's your excitement level for this story? Because the more you love the story, the more passionate you are about that idea and that story world and writing that character and the more you connect with her or him, the more likely Likely you are to actually want to write that story. So this is kind of the second check. You've checked to see how much idea and how much substance there is. Now check to see which one you're most excited about writing. And this is often a really good clue. Now sometimes you may find that out of those five ideas, there's still three of them that you're super excited about writing, but at least you can cross off those other two and now you've narrowed it down. So let's move on to tip number three. Tip number three is another writing assignment. So in this, I want you to try to write the most vivid scene that you can already picture in your mind. So if you've got, say you've narrowed it down to three different ideas. Think about each one individually. Go back to the synopsis that you wrote out. See if you can figure out one scene that comes to mind. It could be a scene that happens at the very end of the book. It could be the very first opening scene of the book, or it could just be a random scene that you're not sure where it's going to fit in, but you can picture it really clearly in your head. So pull out that synopsis of book number one, idea number one, close your eyes, and start to imagine it playing like a movie in your head. Can you see the scene happening? So for example, when I talk about my Robin Hood meets the Matrix story, I knew for a long time that there's this one very vivid scene 
that I could picture in my head featured a pirate ship and her trying to steal something and there being another guy in the room and the interaction that happened between them. And I was super excited about it. When I closed my eyes, I could see it playing around, playing in my head like a movie. And so I just sat down to write it. And I knew that that was something I was excited about. So when you do that, do it for book number one, then maybe the next day sit down and do it for idea number two. Then the next day sit down and do it for idea number three. And take notes along the way as to like when you're done with you're writing out that scene, make a note for yourself. How easily did those words come? How quickly did they flow? How did you feel about them? Did you really like get in that character's head really easily? Like you just slid into it and you could see the world so clearly and you just felt like it was really good writing or was every word like pulling teeth for you? And that's gonna give you another indication as to whether this is the story you should be writing right now. I'm a firm believer that when a story is hot, you should jump on it and go for it. Because when you're really excited about a story, when you love it and the words are flowing and those ideas are there, it's a gift that you have. It's like tapping into some invisible type of magic that allows you to really flow with that story. So if you have the opportunity to be starting something new, Pick the story that gets you the most excited, like I said earlier, but also that starts to flow. And a lot of times those are gonna be the same same things. But if you've already been excited about three different stories, see which one causes the ideas to flow and the excitement to come even more when you're actually writing it. So I would say give yourself at least, you know, a thousand words. And if it's flowing, keep going with it. When I sat down to write that hacked, intro, I sat down and wrote almost 6,000 words in a single session because I was so excited. So that kind of thing, when you just want to keep writing is a really good indication. Now, again, what happens if all three of them are still something you're excited about? Or let's say that you did that exercise and you narrowed it down to two where the words are flowing, you're really excited about it. What can you do now to narrow it down? So tip number four is to look at the market. So if you are planning to just write this for fun, this one doesn't matter as much to you. But if you're looking to write this and actually sell it, so either you're gonna indie publish it and try to sell it directly to readers, or you're going to try to get an agent or an editor, um, like a publishing house, and you're gonna try to get a traditional publishing deal on it, you need to look at the market. And obviously you'll be looking at the market differently if you're traditionally publishing or if you're indie publishing, because with indie, you can publish anything you want. With traditional, they're gonna be looking for certain th types of things now than they were a year ago. So you'll need to kind of do your research based on what your publishing path is most likely to be. But let's say you're going indie. What you wanna do is you wanna go onto sites like Amazon or Apple Books or Google Play Books and look at the top 100 lists. Look at the top 100 books in your genre. So if you go say to Google Play and you go to sci-fi and fantasy and then you go to paranormal because you're writing like an urban fantasy or a paranormal type book, look at those top books, look at the covers, look at some of the blurbs, and then try to see what's popular right now. So there's always going to be trends. So some things are evergreen, like vampires kind of always sell, but sometimes they go in and out of fashion, witches kind of always sell, but there could be a new trend. It's kind of like if you look at Amazon right now in Kindle Unlimited, there are a lot of academy style books that are super popular. Sometimes there are books that are shifter books or werewolf books are specifically popular. Or like I said, maybe vampires are making a big comeback. So whatever it is that's the most popular, you may want to consider it if it's already one of your ideas. This is something that gets a little bit tricky because I personally am not someone who looks at the market and then decides what idea I might have that fits the market, but I know a lot of people are very successful doing that. But the ideas come to me organically but when I get stuck and I say these three ideas I'm so excited about and I don't know which one's the best to write, then if all things are equal in terms of my own personal joy in writing that story, then what I look to next is which one's gonna be probably the most popular with my fans, with you know people who are just general readers, which one is most likely to sell the best or be the best for my career. So like I said, you can use this like evaluating the market to actually choose your idea or to formulate your idea. Or if you're like, me, you'll take those ideas that you already loved, that you've already gone through these other street three steps on, and just sort of try to decide which one is the most marketable. Because when I think about writing to market, I think about writing the most marketable story that I'm excited and would love to write, 
rather than just what's the trendiest genre out there. Because I find that writing to trends is just not something that I'm into. It's not something that I think is going to be a long-term choice for me because trends come and go. But if I can choose the most marketable series idea that I'm in love with, that I'm already passionate about, that was already an organic idea for me, then it's a win-win situation. So look at the market. And of course, I know some of you may have questions. So if you have specific questions about how do I look at the market, how do I analyze the market, then please let me know. This is obviously something we go into in depth in my Publish and Thrive course that will come back around towards the beginning of the year. But it's hard to cover cover it in a shorter YouTube video. So if you have any specific questions, leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. But basically what you want to do is look at all of the vendors and eBooks, and you could even go into Barnes and Noble and look, but sometimes what's selling in trad publishing is not the same as what's selling in indie. So again, know your path and then make your decisions based on that. But look at what other books in your genre are popular and selling and see if any of your, your ideas that you're already in love with sort of fit in with that. So let's say you go to Apple books and all of the top YA books seem to have some kind of horror element to them and they've got shifters in some way. Then you could see that if you look at your three ideas that you're considering, you have a shift or horror book. So you would think, okay, this would be not only something I already know I'm excited about and the ideas are flowing and I love, but this is also something that's likely to sell really well and be successful. So that's tip number four is to consider the market. Tip number five is also a little bit controversial and will not be something that a lot of you will want to try, but I'm gonna mention it anyway. But this is to run your idea by other people. So high concept, if you've ever heard of this, is something where the minute you read about it or the minute somebody sees it, they think, oh, I want to watch that. Just off of the title or just a quick explanation of what the story is, makes you feel like you want to read it or to watch it because it's just got that extra something that taps into a universal experience. And it's a little bit difficult to define high concept, but that's kind of how I think about it. So when you're running these, say you've narrowed it down now after looking at the market to two different ideas. So maybe you want to run these by your spouse, by your best friend, by your critique partner, or a couple of writing buddies. I personally wouldn't run it by, you know, a huge Facebook group because somebody else is going to be like, oh, I want that story idea and I'm going to write that. <laughs> but you could run it by people you know run it by people that you know are readers and say which one of these ideas really sparks your interest more or makes you want to read it more. And then you'll start to get some feedback. Now, I only do this again after I've been through those other first three steps. Those first three steps are really judging how excited you are about it, how much you want to write the story, how much it's flowing. Now you're getting into looking at other people. You look at the market and see how well it would sell. You ask other people about it. You see what they might be most interested in. But all other things being equal, this can really help you. So for example, going back to my hacked idea, I had my sister and her partner in a room one time a few years ago when I was first coming up with this story idea. And my sister said, oh my gosh, drop everything and write that right now. I have to know about it. And this was just me telling her the same things I had just told you guys about it. So I knew at that point, this was a high concept idea. This was something that a lot of people would like. And then I ran it by another person who said essentially the same thing. Then I ran it by one of my beta readers and she said the same thing. So I knew they were all really excited about that story. So therefore it must be high concept and it's more likely to be something that appeals to people who already like my books. So that's another idea. Now I know why I said this is controversial is that there are going to be some of you out there that really subscribe to the idea that you shouldn't talk about your story ideas and you shouldn't tell anyone else because they're going to steal them or the more you talk about it, the less excited you get about it. So that's totally fine. If you want to skip this one because you just don't believe in telling other people your story ideas, then you do you. But for those of us who kind of want that extra feedback, go ahead and get that from someone else. See which idea sort of sparks the most excitement from your readers or from people who typically like your books or like the same things you like. So the final tip that I have for you, number six, is to just go with your gut instinct. So sometimes when we're operating on fear or we're trying to come up with the most sellable thing or like trying to get a deal, sometimes it's hard for us to really hear what our inner voice is saying and what our gut instinct is telling us. So that's why I mentioned all those other steps. But in the end, once you've filled out you know, your synopsis, you've judged your own excitement level, you've written maybe the first couple of scenes from the book, you've looked at the market, you've talked to other people. At that point, you should kind of have 
some sort of gut instinct about which one you most want to write and which one's going to do the best. If you're choosing between two ideas and one seems like it's more sellable and the other one you're more excited about, you're going to have to decide what your priorities are. Is your priority trying to make money on something that you really don't know yet is going to make money, but it just seems like it fits the market better? Or is your priority writing something that you're super excited about writing? And that's going to be super individual to every single person watching it. I personally want to choose the one that's the most exciting for me to write. But sometimes when you know that you're making a living with your writing, it's really tempting to just write the one that seems the most marketable. Um, but either way you go, if you've got two great ideas or three great ideas that you know are flowing, that people are excited about, that you're excited about, you can't go wrong. So just go with your gut instinct. One way to do this, it's like a little way to trick yourself, is to write each story idea or each like tentative title name down on an index card, fold it a couple of times, put all three or four whatever ideas into a hat, mix them up, and then pick one. And if that story idea that comes up makes you feel disappointed because you're thinking the whole time you're picking oh, I hope it's the Matrix meets Robin Hood. I hope it's this hacked story. Then you kind of know your gut is telling you that's the one you most want to write. So just go with that one. So you can kind of trick yourself into figuring out what your gut instinct says. So the surprise, like pick one, can often help you decide. But this is some of the process that I go through when I'm trying to decide between stories. And there's just a couple more things that I wanna say about this. Number one is that if you are already in the middle of a series, you're, what you should write next is usually just the next book in the series. I have made a lot of mistakes in my career by saying, okay, I'm gonna go write this other thing and this other thing until I had five series running at once and that, was not good for my career and I'm still trying to get myself out from under that and actually discussing strategy of which series you should write next and stuff like that could be a pretty huge topic that we might go into in a series at some point. But if you're just starting something brand new, a brand new series or a brand new standalone, these are the steps that I think will most help you get to that magical place where you feel like this is the story that I was meant to write or this is the story I'm going to write. So my biggest tips are, again, write out a synopsis of each story, see which one has the most substance to it. Number two, check your excitement level. Which one are you most excited about writing? Number three, write out an entire scene and see which one has the words flowing the best. Number four, look at the market, analyze the market and see which one seems to be the most marketable. Number five, run your ideas by a few friends or family or readers and see what they think, see which one gets them most excited. And if it's unanimous, then go with that one. Or number six, just put them all in a hat pick one and make that decision or listen to your gut instinct when you're making that choice and see which one your gut was telling you, I really wish it was this one. And then follow that 100%. In the end, like I said, unless you somehow get access to a crystal ball or some kind of future path and you could go out and see, okay, if I choose option one or doorway two or doorway three, how would my future look? then you really are never going to know which one is the best story. So just set a deadline for yourself and say, by this date, I'm going to pick one and go for it. Um, but I find that most often when you follow your heart and you write the book that's most exciting to you, that seems marketable, that is um, something that really just has a lot of conflict, has great characters, the story is just flowing, that that's usually gonna be the best choice for you. So hopefully these tips have resonated with you. I hope this is gonna be helpful, helpful for you as you go to choose your next story, your next series, or what you're going to write for NaNoWriMo. So hopefully I will now have videos for you guys every Thursday again, and sometimes on Sunday or on the weekend. So look out for the October Notebook Challenge coming up, as well as a recent haul from me and lots more videos to come. Um, I'll also have a free download for a NaNoWriMo Awards Sprint tracker. So come back and check on that next Thursday. I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below and I will see you soon. Bye.